Do you have what it takes to be the diamond? That's it. That's my intro. Hi, I'm Amanda. You're watching Soul Entertainment, and I went to the Bridgerton Experience, the Queen's Ball, this past week, and. I had a lot of fun. I liked it a lot. Okay, but I, I obviously, I went to review it for you guys because I'm just, I'm a giver like that. The Queen's Ball is an interactive experience slash show. I heard about it, God, sometime last year when it was being advertised through Fever. Fever is also how I, how I found out about the Van Gogh experience here in LA. I liked the Van Gogh experience enough, so when I heard about the Bridgerton Ball, I was like, uh, yeah, sounds good. Let's go. I think I bought my ticket sometime in October and I thought I bought VIP, but then when the event actually came around and it was time for me to choose my date of when I was going to be going, VIP was like sold out. And so I was only able to select a non sold out day, but I didn't have to pay for a second time. So I don't know what the heck I was supposed to be getting. Um, but anyway, I got general admission. I went alone and um, I decided I was going to get fully dressed up because it was fun. And I saw the photos leading up to it. I was like, obviously I'm gonna get dressed up. Like it's a ball. <laughs> I'm gonna look pretty. If you do end up going to this, whether it's this one here in LA or the one, I believe there's one in DC also happening, you're more likely to be underdressed than you are to be overdressed. I think it's fairly impossible to be overdressed at this event because there were people in full on ball gowns, period gowns, more is better, I think. <laughs> in my opinion. I went, I wore a dress that I got from a shop in the orange circle called Elsewhere. And uh, it was like a 90s gown that I bought last year for no real reason. I was just like, this is nice. It fit me well. I was like, okay, I'm gonna get this. And then it just kind of worked out perfectly for the event. I had it dry cleaned. I had it cleaned because I had, there was makeup on the collar that wasn't mine. So I got that cleaned. And then as I was getting ready for the event, <laughs> I noticed something. My dress is broken and I just noticed this dress crisscrosses in the back. As you can see, it buttons across and there's this little thing here that's supposed to cross over here and it was there before and now it's not there <laughs> and they didn't put it on the note. So I didn't notice. <laughs> so I'm using my bronze award from Girl Scouts, like the toddler that I am, um, to see if I can use it to secure the strap in place. My dress was broken. I managed to fix it, it ended up working out. But uh, the event here in LA is at the Biltmore Hotel uh, in downtown. Beautiful hotel, by the way, absolutely stunning. After the event, I walked around a little bit and it's just a beautiful hotel. Stop trying to eat my gloves. I'm fancy. I vlogged a good deal of the event, uh, getting there and all of that. I did not vlog most of the performances itself because I realized very quickly that they want you to experience it. Shocker, it's called the Bridgerton Experience. Let's play a game called, Am I in the Right Place? When I first got to the event, I got my ticket check-in, I got my wristband and they were like, hey, doors are gonna open in like five minutes, just, but you're all good to go once the doors are open. I was waiting around and then when the moment you walk in, you walk through the archway and then you are greeted by two people dressed in Bridgerton attire. They are like, would you like the society papers? Yes, of course. And in the whistle down, I noticed that there was various passages talking about how you could be named the diamond of the evening. And I was like, okay, this is content. Let's see if I can be named the diamond. And I'm gonna be honest, there was a moment there, a few minutes there where I was like, oh fuck, is it gonna be me? This could also be my anxiety that tells me that everyone is staring at me and judging me 24 seven. Um, it could have been that talking. I kept dancing with some of the performers and then there was multiple times where I like was looking around and kept catching their eyes and they were looking at me. And I was like, oh fuck. Am I the diamond? <laughs> um, I was not in the diamond, spoiler alert. We'll talk more about that in a minute, but it was very clear in the whistle down. Why am I doing, I, as if I don't still have it. It's a little folded because I fit it inside my bag because again, like I said, I filmed a lot, but I kept putting my phone away so my hands were free because I realized that uh, when my hands were free, they were, the performers were talking to me more and getting me to dance more because it looked like I was willing to participate because I was willing to participate. So I just kept my phone away as much as possible. Here we have, for those attempting to win the favor of Her Majesty the Queen by being named Diamond of the Evening at the approaching Queen's Ball, it would serve you well to shed your wallflower petals and participate in the evening. You would not want to be left behind simply because you hesitated. So right away, 
not being in the corners, not being against the wall, being in the action near the performers, uh, the edge of the dance floor, the edge of the walkway. Hermes is trying to eat my hand as I am talking to you. Those vying to be chosen as diamond of the evening at the upcoming Queen's Ball may want to keep an eye out for Lady Maria Branwell. Sources say she has been preparing for this moment and is reported to be practically perfect in every way. Only time will tell if she has what it takes to be the diamond or simply a lump of coal in disguise. She is the female lead performer. Keep your eyes peeled for Lord Wilfred Fitzwilliam, who has been known to sweep many a lady off her feet and on the dance floor. If you happen to get his name on your dance card, but are not nearly as advanced, do not despair. He is a very good instructor. He's the uh, performer that I danced with later on in the evening and at the start of the evening. I have some photos, we'll talk. And then again, a word to the wise, if you are helpful to being the diamond, it would have a conversation with Sir Harris Thornbury. As there are reports, he has the queen's ear, need a topic. He is especially passionate about Parmesan ice cream and will try to indoctrinate you. At the last thing here, there is a scavenger hunt that was going on throughout the evening. Um, I don't think it's important. It was a little nonsensical. I don't think that it wasn't like possible to do it. I just, I think that it was one of those things where you would have to do it before you go into the actual performance. And there's just not a whole lot of time to do that. So if you do want to participate in photos, actually shopping in the Modi, getting drinks, the portraiture thing. Um, in order to do that, I think you should kind of ignore the scavenger hunt. And as far as I could tell, I don't think it really got you anything as far as the end of the performance goes. So that was what I knew. And there was one guy who um, I believe, Harris Thornbury, Thornby, um, because he was very involved, very loud, very encouraging. And at first I thought he was just like an, a gung-ho attendee, but no, he was part of the show. I noticed because he had a, what looked like a pin on his uh, tie thing that was similar to a lot of the uh, pins or the marks that was on a lot of the Lady Whistledown uh, clues that was pinned around the event. So once you go into the event, you have the modiste, you have the bar, there's no food at this thing. Zero food that I can see eat beforehand or do what I did and get McDonald's at the end. Throughout the event, they have outfits that are actually in the show uh, with title cards of who was wearing them and uh, I believe what episodes. I should admit, I, I was lying to myself. I wear glasses all the time. I don't know if you've noticed. I wear these all the time. It's not just a bit for my videos. I don't like contacts. I have them. I'm bad at wearing them. I'm bad at putting them in. I'm, I'm bad at keeping them in. I don't like wearing contacts. So I told myself that I could do what I sometimes do when I go to events where I just keep my glasses with me, but I don't wear them and I don't wear contacts. I was lying to myself. My eyesight is so much worse than I thought it was. My goodness, I was operating on 5% vision the entire night. How I didn't eat shit and die, I don't know. I was a hazard to other people, I'm assuming, um, but I, I was doing my best. I apologize if I almost stepped on anyone's feet or anything, I could not see. My depth perception was very much off. As far as reading certain things that were on the walls, uh, signs of where things were, the placards for the gowns that were displayed everywhere, I could not, I couldn't see it. I couldn't read it. I filmed what I could, but I couldn't read it in the moment. That was it. Anyway, I got in line at one point for the teardrop photo display, which is where a lot of people are getting photos from the events. It was a beautiful setup and a lot of the photos that are coming out of it are stunning. I just didn't wanna wait in line. There was too much to see and I'm glad I didn't wait in line because I would have missed the portrait uh, section, which is kind of like Daphne and Simon's portrait at the end of season one. They have a setup where it's a camera that kind of paints you in this uh, portrait style. Here's mine, I looked pretty. Part of me was like kind of like a little embarrassed that I was there alone when a lot of people were there as a couple or with like their friends or uh, there, uh, there was a lot of mother daughters at this event. Part of me was a little embarrassed I was alone, but then I saw this photo and I was like, fuck, I look good. And the guy was like, very nice, uh, who was operating the camera. And so I was like, <laughs> very nice. I did that. And then I got in line to greet the queen because the queen came out. So I got in line to greet the queen. But as I was getting close to the front of the line, some of the performers were like, oh, hey, step back. Just one second, you're gonna wait here. And I realized that they were gonna do a performance and that is where Lord Wilfred Fitzwilliam came out and did a little acrobatic contemporary dance stunt there. And then Thornby came out and was like, okay, dance with him, dance with him like getting uh, people to go and participate in this dance with him for the queen. The girl that was sitting and standing in front of me who did end up dancing was like, oh, I don't know if I was, I was like, I'll do it. And so right off the bat, I was kind of establishing that I was willing to dance. <laughs> I was willing to participate. There ended up being, I think, 
got close to 12 of us maybe because there were several of us in this group, but I was right next to uh, the actor the entire time. So I'm assuming that that's what led into later because I just really quickly found a table, set down my bag, my phone, my my little wrap shawl thing, which I honestly was more of a, a hindrance for most of the night than anything. And he's explaining everything. So it's very, if you can just follow basic directions, you'll get it. It's very quickly. I am, I don't, I can't dance. I don't have rhythm at all. I did ballet when I was three, but I don't have rhythm. I have vibes and they're not great vibes. So uh, if I can do this, you can do this. You know, that's my point. It was very basic. He walked you through everything. It was great and it was fun. Then the dance is done, the end. I was right by the queen. So I kept like smiling. I was like, oh yes, we're having fun. You know, making it very clear that I am there to participate because I highly recommend that. When I, when I go to these events, I do try and get involved. I know I'm there to review it, but I do try and actually participate in the events because then I think I get, I get the most out of it. I get my money's worth and then I can properly review it for you. I think that these events, this one, if you are willing to dance, if you are willing to be a part of it, absolutely go for it. Just jump in. The worst thing that can happen is that you trip a little bit and you know, you're fine. You know, everyone was tripping. None of us knew what we were doing. It was fun. We then had to split. So we couldn't greet the queen anymore at that point. So again, if you're doing the scavenger hunt, there are things you're going to miss, like getting your time to do your little intro with the queen that everyone is seeing on Instagram. There is a lady whistle down character that is like kind of announcing things like, Oh, a green dress. How stunning. Oh, was that finger guns? You know, things like that. Then from that, the queen left and moved on. So again, you've got to kind of be quick. And then the doors were open for the actual area of the ballroom where the ball was. I did a little bit more of a lap to kind of get more of my bearings. Then I went right in and found where the dance floor was. Everything, it was beautiful. I love the setup of the room. Queen walks in, sits in her spot. The, uh, the, the all of this stuff. I just kind of made sure I was in the vicinity of the dance floor again. I participated more. Um, the uh, diamonds of the evening, Lady Maria Branwell is introduced to the queen. She is called Flawless. She looks beautiful. She's stunning. Lord Fitzwilliam comes out and they do a dance. And as they were greeting each other or whatever, the story is kind of reminiscent of uh, Kate and Anthony in season two of Bridgerton. You don't need to have watched the season to understand the event, um, but it is it was fun to see it. And you can see certain parallels in them, but they are two separate characters. But oh my God, did this guy look like Anthony. Very similar. Although I am convinced that like at least a third of the male population looks like that. The one performer was funny because every time they were trying to dance to get us off the dance floor and make room for them, because um, we're all like, involved in the event, but obviously there are certain points where they kind of need us all off of the floor for the dance moves because they're flying around, they're doing kicks, they're leaping. It's a safety hazard. You gotta listen when they push you off the floor. He kept saying, uh, make room, please. I believe they're about to have a heterosexual moment. Like he said it like five or six times throughout the night. It was funny. The girls next to me though, as they were dancing, very cute dance, very sweet, very uh, polite. It was interesting to see how the moods of the dances changed throughout the night. But the girls behind me kept saying, where's the bee? And obviously if you watch season two or if you're familiar with the books, you understand the significance of the bee. And so there was a bee, a woman came out dressed like a bee and we all cheered because everyone was like, fuck yeah, it's the bee. And she was great. She was dancing. She drew us all in and we had to do a dance with her um, in the middle of the floor. It was very fun. It was down, shoulder, back, shoulder, down, other leg, shoulder, back, shoulder, down, both legs, mm, drop, it's like it's hot. It was like that. It was fun. I liked it. I enjoyed it, she was fun. And then we had to make more room for another heterosexual moment. Or no, was it the dance first? I don't know. I had danced in the first dance. I danced during the B dance. I was right in front of her. And I was always on the edge of the dance floor towards the front. So when they had to pick someone to dance with them, Fitzwilliam made a beeline to me, sorry, the B pun, and asked for me to dance with him. And I was like, Okay, sure. And I danced and um, I was mortified, yes, but shout out to, I think her name was Sophia for taking photos of me um, while we were dancing. So I have live photos of us dancing. He was guiding me the entire time, but again, vibes, not rhythm. The fact that I wasn't, my, my shawl was falling off. I was very awkward. I was doing my best, but it was fun. We were dancing very quick and then bowed at the end. Um, and then they did another dance. There was this one moment where um, he, there, the leads are dancing and he took off one glove. And at first it's kind of like, like an accident, like, oh no, look what I did. And everyone gasped. <laughs> 
like, oh. <laughs> and then he did the other glove and then his jacket came off and it was like, are we gonna watch them fuck? <laughs> I thought it was funny. More dancing altogether. At this point, um, the female lead came over to where uh, my kind of section was and had us all make two lines. And I danced with this wonderful, very nice lady. I don't know what her name was, but later on in the night, I heard her telling uh, a group in the boutique that her and her mom actually made her dress themselves. It was a very beautiful dress. I don't know how much of the music I can play from my video clips because all of it was popular songs, orchestra style, <laughs> instrumental orchestras. They played Good For You at one point. Bad Guy, obviously, because that was in the show. It was good, I liked it a lot. Um, there was this one moment where they, because they had silks at one point and they were dancing around. And I thought that they had broken one of the silks and everyone was like, oh no. And they kind of acted like it was like a broken silk that had fallen down because the way it was set up. And I was like, oh no. And then no, the dance goes on and it's like they're ripping away the barriers between the two actors. I loved it. It was so good because they're like, she's kind of running from him like they're running from their attraction to each other. <laughs> it was so, this is, okay. This is what I'm learning right now at this point in my life, okay? I am not horny. I am romantically starved. That's where I'm at. I haven't been on a date since July of last year. If someone were to like tenderly hold my hand, I'd probably just spontaneously combust at this point. That's where I'm at with this pandemic, even though things are basically unlocked now, even though people are still getting COVID. That's where I'm at. <laughs> By the way, they checked everyone's uh, vaccine status or recent COVID test uh, before going in. So there's really not many masks in my event, in my videos. And that's why they checked status and then COVID test if you didn't have, if you're not vaccinated. But yeah, no, the dance was very sweet. I liked it a lot. They were, the performers were very talented. There was one moment where they were spinning from the chandelier and he lowered her and her arms flexed. And Mike from Mike, Mike's and Oscar always makes fun of me because of the way I talk about women's arms. But oh my, I I, I gasped then when I saw her arms flex. She's, whew. I like women who could kick my ass. Excuse me, my God. Okay, anyway, moving forward. So they uh, dance a little bit more. Um, and then the queen announces that she's seen enough. She is ready to name a diamond for the season. And again, like I said, for a split second, I was like, oh, fuck, is it me? It, they were kind of singling out me. And then what I thought I believed to be this one uh, woman who was there with her boyfriend, um, who was also towards the front on the other side of me. Um, but the queen kind of did a lap and then pointed to this one pirate looking man. And everyone laughed. So yeah, he, he's the diamond. Yeah, he is. He was excited. He was having fun. He was like, yeah, I'm the diamond. Fuck yeah, it was good. Queen leaves. Most of the performers leave after bowing. Lady Whistledown is revealed. She leaves and uh, we're able to dance for a little bit. One of the performers, uh, Thornby, I believe, danced with us where it was a single ladies rendition. We were on the stage. They moved the stage. It was fun. We had a good time. I left around then. Um, I recommend either leaving right away or just sticking around and then leaving. Um, like I said, I don't think the VIP got you much other than um, priority entry. And then I, someone told me that it got you a glass of champagne and then priority seating. But again, if you wanna be involved in the event, I don't recommend sitting in the uh, seating section unless you just wanna watch. If you just wanna watch the festivities, you can absolutely go and sit by the seating section. Go right ahead. I like to be involved. As you're leaving, you can go through the archway, but you cannot re-enter like where the bar was, where the modiste was, where the photo section was. So that's why I'm suggesting that if you want those, do that first before you go into anything else. Go and get that done because you're not gonna be able to get a chance to do it at the end of the event. I just got like a selfie inside the little photo section um, because I'm there alone. I went to the little boutique area where they had Bridgerton merch and basically everything that was in the modiste, but just like little smaller scale. And that's where I got my gloves and they had a feather fan too, but I had a feeling that was going to go all over the place and Hermes would inhale feathers. And I don't feel like freaking out over him coughing on a feather. So I got the wood one. So then after that, you can leave. There was, there's the, the hotel bar right there that you can go to if you want. And that's kind of it. I really liked the event. I thought it was done really well. While we were dancing uh, towards the end, I noticed this one girl wearing this bitch in uh, DC comics a uh, jean jacket that had like painted DC comic characters on it. That was also rhinestones and I complimented her on it. And then I filmed a little bit more of the event and then she found me afterwards. She was like, hi, sorry, this is gonna sound weird. Are you the YouTube lady? I like to say that I 
am only recognizable by my glasses when I'm wearing a mask, but I was not wearing a mask. But then also I have been told that my voice is recognizable and I did compliment her on her jacket. So maybe if I hadn't said anything to her, she wouldn't have recognized me. Much to think about. Her name was Gabby and I was telling her, she was like, I've never seen like YouTubers in public. So she was like, you look amazing. It was very nice of her. And I was like, yeah, no, I'm reviewing the event. Are you like enjoying it? And she was like, yeah, it's very polished. Everything is like, clearly nothing was spared is what she said. And yeah, so she was cool. So shout out Gabby. We got a little video clip together and a little selfie together for her. I got the photos of the dance from the girls. And then I went home. Uh, leaving the parking structure uh, was annoying. Uh, the Biltmore's parking structure is uh, annoying as hell. Keep that in mind. Um, when you're leaving, you will be waiting. It's worse than concert exiting, honestly, like a stadium show. Honestly, it was really bad. So I know when I left, I paid, but like an alarm went off in the Biltmore as I was leaving and it stressed me the fuck out. I thought I did something. I was like, oh no, my car, I stole my car. <laughs> That's what I thought happened. And then I drove home and I went and got McDonald's because I was starving. Side note, the next day, I don't know how, but I feel like I was gate kept. Why did any of you tell me that dancing is such a good workout? My legs were fucking killing me. Every, more than leg day, like uh, forget squats. Every muscle in my leg and glute was hurting me after dancing in heels for not even that long, like a couple of, like an hour or two. The whole event lasted maybe two hours, if that in total. Why was I in so much pain? What was that? I feel like you guys have been lying to me about like, clearly I need to sign up for like some high heel dance class or something because that workout was insane. I didn't even feel it in the moment, but the next day I was dying. Like I, you, like usually my feet just hurt the day of when I wear heels for too long or whatever, but apparently dancing gives you a full on full leg workout. Forget squats, I'll just take a ballroom dancing. I feel like you've, I've, you've hidden something from me. I feel like lied to. Why did no one tell me? All in all, I really liked it. I think for the price, I think it was got a total of $56 for general. I think for the everything that you, the experience itself, I think it was a lot of fun. I really encourage you to get involved and dance if you're dancing or whatever. It's a little bit of public anxiety. I mean, I was like panicking half the time, but it was still fun and I enjoyed it a lot. You don't have to be good at dancing to participate or whatever. If you wanna just do the little introduction with the queen, you absolutely can. And yeah, I thought it was fun. The performers were all very smiley. All the people working there were very nice and polite. At one point I asked one of the security guards after the queens had, after the queen had left and every, the performers left, I was like, is it okay if I take a video clip of like the stage? And he was like, yeah, sure, just don't go up there. I know I'm not saying a whole lot about the performance itself. Um, I really didn't film most of it because I was really just kind of enjoying it and participating as much as I could. And uh, like I said, I think being involved is a great way to enjoy this event because that's kind of what you want. Have you been to any of the Bridgerton experiences? Uh, would you like to go? Are you planning on going? I believe it's now sold out, but I'm not sure. Um, if you do decide to go, I highly recommend being involved 100%. But let me know if you do go, comment down below. Reminder that I have my podcast, The Swell Shenanigans Podcast, new episodes every Wednesday. Reminder, I have merch like that mug back there. All that will be linked down below. Shout out to my patrons. Thank you so much for supporting me on Patreon. If you'd also support me on Patreon, that'll be listed down below. If you'd like to follow me on my social media, I'll be all up here. And that's going to be it. Have a lovely day. Goodbye. I love after an event. It's my own little personal tradition. Whether they have food or not, I go and get fast food. Usually I get in and out but the line in and out was freaking insane. So I went to McDonald's. Thank you, Audrey, Allen, Cameron, Christopher, Chris, Cody, Crash, PC, China, Devin, Dirty One, Don, Elliot, Evan, Beckles, Hopes, Incognito, Jacka Ray, Joe, John, M, Jordan, Joseph, Kenny, Kevin, Kim, Kristen, Lamb, Lex, Lisa, Louise, Matt, Matt O, Matthew S, Meme Lord, Michael, Michael J, Micah, Nathan, Nathaniel, Pat, Penn, Richard, Rob, Red, Robert, Ross, Serena, Sam, Skylar, Simon, Tasha, Tindley, Tom, Wendy, William, Winter, Zendry, Zwing.